اللهم سرنا النصر على دين الإسلام ولا تجعلنا منهم عمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد سابق اللوامه أنواره من السماوات صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه عدد الرمال وعدد النجوم السماء أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المبين بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله سمد لم يرد ولم يلد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العظيم وبلغ رسول الكريم سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم يا عباد الله اليوم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كل جمعة عيد اليوم عيد المسلمين والمسلمات في كل أرض اللهم صل وسلم على سيد الوجود محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تصيما كثيرا من يوم الدين Dear believers today The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us that every Friday is a festival, is a Eid. We have to celebrate. We wear our finest clothes. We smell the nicest smell. And we proceed to the masjid. That is even why the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that is not is disliked to keep fast Fridays in an ordinary day, except if you want to fast a day before or a day after for a purpose. But just to pick a Friday to keep fast in the sun of the Prophet is forbidden because that is a day of joy, of happiness, of friendship, of brotherhood, of eating a good meal and to be happy together. So this needs to be understood. But today, uh, I want to talk to you about Allah Azza wa Jalla. Often, uh, most of the time, we talk about everything, but we never talk about God Himself, the cause of everything. And uh, it's very necessary that the people talk about God Himself, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself. Khairu wa kullu shayin. He's the one who created everything, and uh, we need to always. Remind to the people his greatness and he is the cause of everything. So, and when the Christians of Yemen, uh, come for, for of Yemen from Najran visited the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina al Munawwara, so the Surah Ayrin Surah Ikhlas have been revealed twice to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, one to teach the people Tawheed and the second one he was to answer some Christian who have come and visited him in his masjid in uh, uh, Medina al Munawwara, Masjid Nabawiyya. So, and you know, nobody cannot describe Allah Azza wa Jalla. Only Him can tell, we, tell us who He is. And because you have to comprehend Him, to know Him, to describe Him. And no one can know him and comprehend him. Because if we do, we will be God then. That knowledge of describing God have not been given to man. 
the knowledge of knowing Allah Azawajalla fully have not begun to man. Because if it's given to man, then man is just God, just a God, God. So the difference between man and God is because everything man have is little of what Allah has possessed to give it to him. So the little he possess cannot describe or understand God who is a superior being who begin creations. So when the Christian of Najran visited the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they have heard that there is a man who claimed to be a prophet, the last messenger of Allah Azza wa Jalla, and he was an Arab, they wanted to know first what he going to tell them about uh, Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam. They, they believe it was a God, son of God, and all of that. They say, well, if this man claimed to know God, to be sent by God, indeed, he can tell you a little bit better about Jesus Christ, Isa ibn Maryam, excuse me for the term, but to make the people understand, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, that who he was. So they make that journey to the Prophet Mosque, and they spend three days in that, that prophet with the prophet sunlight. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in his sunnah, when you get a guest, uh, you have to entertain him, take care of him. He's Christian, Muslim, Jew, and do whatever he can be. You must take care of him for three days. Must. Even he meet you, the poorest of the poor in the town, you're going to sell your belonging in secret, take care of him. The fourth day, you can call him, tell him this year, you visit me in a moment where it's very difficult, uh, I cannot no more able to take care of you. Then he leave or he choose to do otherwise. So these three days, without no complaint, the mission of Allah hosted these uh, people and take care of them properly, allow, allowing them even to pray in the masjid. Because that was obliga obli an obligation for the Muslim uh, culture, the Muslim Sunnah. And then finally they come to sit and talk about God. And they wanted to know who is God because the Prophet lies and tell them, no, you wrong. Isa alayhi salam, Christ is not God, he's a messenger, he cannot be God, he's not the son of God, his mother is not the mother of God. This needs to be very clean. So they finally tell him, well, if you did deny that Christ was God and Son of God, and can you tell me who is God? And the Surat have been redescended again to the Prophet Sallallahu Because nobody can explain God, describe God, introduce God, except God himself. So then if we know him as he know himself, then he is no God no more. Is God because it's above us, above our understanding, above our knowledge? Is God because we cannot fully understand Him? We cannot grasp the way He functions. We don't know how He look alike. We don't know where He is. That is make a God. That making a God. The day we know God, in that time we are God too. Then the greatness of God and the mystery uh, around him that make we have to bow down and worship him. All what we know from him is through the sign he have sent to us that uh, indeed this, this is God and in this there is a God. The rain we pour down and the prayer we ask and the dream we have and the Quran, the books full of light we have received and we say yes indeed there is a God. This is the knowledge of man to God but no more than, than that. So there is a difficult question that people ask, can we tell you who is God? Even though the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet, he will not able to himself comprehend God in his, in his full measure, because he will be then God. He's above everything. Al-awwalu wal-akhiru, al-zairu wal-batinu, wallahu khariqo kullu shayin. Is the first and the last, is the, is the apparent and the manifest. How can you explain that? Somebody can be hidden and apparent at the same time. You see the language even he talk is amazing. Because we don't say, wow, what is that? I am apparent and I am hidden. What is that? You just know able to get this. You put it anywhere you want, you explain it anywhere you want, but only God knows what he's talking about. And he says, I am closer to you than your regular veins. You say, what is that? What is that God? Where he is then? The regular vein, you know what it is? The two veins in the left here and the other vein in the left. There are two regular veins, two. 
one pumping the blood to, to, from the heart to the brain and one from the brain to the heart, that circulation, and that is life. That's why when you're cutting throats, you just cut that. If you cut this, somebody is pronounced dead because of the circular vein. Because that blood is everything in the human being. God, he says, I am even closer to that to the human being than he knows. That's why he chose he choose that term in the Quran to tell us how he's closer to us than our jugular vein. Because life is, is only given because of that jugular vein. Because that's the pipe who give we the, 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 the wind of life. The souffle of life every day comes from that blood who circulate. The, when the blood uh, stops circulating, the man is pronounced dead. That is it. The heart will not able to beat again. And this is what Allah said. So, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have to answer this thing. And here comes Sayyidina Jibril Alaihi When they ask him that question, he put his head down for a while. It's difficult to know, to describe God. That's why any time you see in the Quran Qul is that Allah, uh, there is a question uh, asked to the Messenger of Allah and only Allah has to bring the question now we cannot answer the question. That's why there is Qul. Say, they come to rescue him. Allah send the angel Gabriel to tell him, go quick, tell my Habibul Mustafa, my beloved chosen. Or you're going to see in the Quran, if they ask you, this is what your answer will be. So when you see this passage in the Quran, it's because Allah is giving the knowledge to the Prophet when the people will come to him and ask him questions. So he can able to get the answer. And sometimes he gives the answer a night before the people come. Sometimes Allah Azawajal say, let me prepare my Habibul Mustafa. Because tomorrow there is a group of people who are going to come and ask him this question and that question. Let me give him, and he come to him, he tell him, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ If they ask you. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْأَنْفَالِ when they ask you about the booty of war, when they ask you about the soul, when they ask God about the blood of, of the menstruation of the woman, he give him all this before, because in the next day, some people are going to come and ask those questions, and the Prophet indeed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time, do not know. So Allah will prefer his messenger, so he able to have all the, the knowledge when the people come, he able to give them what indeed they're looking for, all praise be to Allah. And uh, uh, the Sayyidina Jibreel uh, Islam arrived with Khul. Khul Allahu Ahad. And he repeated thing to this uh, uh, Christian of Najran. He telling them, he t uh, describing Allah Azawajalla to them because of Allah Azawajalla himself is speaking through Sayyidina Jibreel Islam to tell Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu what he says to these people. He can describe God, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. No one can. So and he repeated that. The beauty of ikhlas is khulu uh, Allahu ahad. Ahad is thirteen letters. I got thirteen in value in Arabic numeric value. Alif one, ha eight, del four. I got thirteen. The beauty of khulu ikhlas, Allah has composed this beautiful surat with thirteen letters. Allah akbar. 13 letters in the alphabet compose Khulu Allahu Ahad. If you check it, you're going to see 13 or off. And Ahad in uh, numeric value equal 13. And Allah have 13 asma wa sifat. Everything is connected in a most beautiful way to Allah. Everything is connected. So, when you finish recite Khulu Surat Ikhlas for them, the Christian was closed up. The Quran, he answer every question you raise, either openly or secretly. Quran answer, the Quran answer every doubt you have. You are no, you know, formulate yet. The Quran answer everything you want to know, but you know, been able to formulate the question in yourself. Al-Quran answered that. This is the beat of the Quran. What you want to know, 
what you do not know, what you have doubt, what you do not comprehend, what you want to comprehend, what everything Al-Quran answer that without talking to you. Because Allah indeed he make man and the Quran is Shifa wa Rahma. Because it's a Shifa, it's a have to get all the answers the people want to able to keep functioning. <laughs> Shifa is because the disease of the human being is not only because he's sick, he cannot go, he gets cancer. It's disease, it's ignorance. It's the greatest disease. It's to be, to be a jail. Cancer is not a disease. A jail is a disease. Somebody who do not know who is God. That is, a, that is, a, that is somebody who's sick. Who sick, you know, mean he get cancer, he mean this, he get this. No, jailia, uh, 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 ignorance, that is what is the disease. It's the greatest disease with everything to not to know. That's why we have to find knowledge like Muhammad says from the cradle to the grave. Without knowledge, a human being is not even what to be called knowledge, a human being. And that's why Allah says in the Quran that some human beings are even worse than the animals. And he says some human being, their heart is stronger than the stone, even there is a soft stone, Allah says in the Quran. That's why he says some human being are Sharul Bariya in Surah Al Bayina. He did tell me that. Sharul Bariya, he means worse than all the creatures, even the animals count, that some people, dogs, are better than them because of re rejecting the belief in the one God who have created them. Can you imagine? Create you, nourish you, protect you, nurture you, guide you, give you all the joys and give you any element you have to live and you say indeed there is no God. That is, so you become worse than animals. Allah knows. So the Quran in Surah Ikhlas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer every single thing of the question who will be raised. So after the Prophet Sallallahu finished the Surah Ikhlas, they can talk. And in the end, وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوَ الْحَيْ And they say, wow, we just can't talk. We just can't answer. We just can't raise a question. It looked like whatever we wanted to, 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 to uh, use as an argument have been closed by this small three verses in the Quran. The power of the Quran is, is a kalam who can be unfolded, is endless in his knowledge, al Quran Karim. This is the beat of the, the, the Quran. In these three sentences, Allah have described himself in a way no one, nowhere, no how somebody can give that explanation of Allah Azawajal, except himself. Surah Ikhlas. So, and guess what? They no been able, they was defeated, humiliated. They cannot say nothing no more. Because Allah has said that. It was not begotten, now it will begot. He have not been born by somebody, and he no have no children, no wife, no father, no mother. This again bring a greater question. Where this come from then? And this is what make him a God. If we know the origin of Allah, he is then less than God. His greatness will uh, have to be discovered and known by the people he created. Then he will not be God. His origin have to be incognito. The way he function incognito. His power, we see it, his manifestation of his power. But we, can, we cannot grasp nothing about God except the rahmah he, he, he sent on us. This is the beauty of the greatness of Allah So then God, if you get, if you get a child, he's just like you and me. He will be less than a God. And if you get a God, if you get a child, he will be certainly just like God. Because if two lions have a baby, the baby will be a lion. If two elephants have a baby, the, the, the baby will be an elephant of God, of course. If God have a baby, the God have to, the, the baby of God will be God. It's far above what they, SubhanAllah, Amma Yushrikun, the Quran says. 
that those people who uh, uh, define him as son is far from what the people ascribe to him. He's not a human being. A God is God because he knows the sleep. You see, he's showing you in the Quran how is demarcation from being a human being. That in order to feel slumber, need to sleep because it's God. We sleep, we cannot be God. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asleep, he cannot be God. Isaim ibn Maryam alayhi salam sleep, he cannot be God. Can you imagine a God who taking a nap? What's going to happen in this complex universe? Where the billions of stars traveling 24 hours, the sun, the moon, and all the, the planet, and all the things, the animals in the oceans who giving birth, Allah have to be there for them. The, the, the animal in the jungle, the human being in this universe, uh, the winds is controlled, the water, where it's raining, where is the flood, where is the earthquake, Allah, as a wajalla, the animal kingdom, the birds, the insects, the trees, Everything is that one God who controls all the cosmos and universe. How can you sleep? How can? How can you sleep, subhanAllah? So this is the greatness of Allah, the Then when the, 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 the Christian of Najran have been answered by the Messenger of Allah by reciting to them, Allah Wahad. Nothing, nothing is similar to him, comparable to him, nothing. Because he creates, you know, part of that creation. And how can there is anything who is going to be comparable to him? And subhanAllah, they will know, they know, have no answer at the time. But they insisted, well, anyway, we stay firm in Christ is God, is the Son of God. So Allah is now after giving this beautiful explanation of ikhlas, if he still you know get it, you will never have it no more. He tell them, listen, simple. What left to do? You all will come to visit me, come under this tree here, wait for me, I go to my house, I'm gonna take my family, and let me right now here. Yeah, before you go back, let me ask Allah, whoever wrong, make the curse of Allah fall upon you now. Because you cannot convince these people. A jail is a jail. It's a simple. Uh, over. The matter is over. You don't you know, believe me? I don't believe you. What are we going to do? Let me call then for the one who is lying, the curse of God fall upon him. When he went home to pick up his family, the Christian consulted themselves. They say, you know what? It looks like this man is true. It's true. Let me not do this. Let me just leave. Because this man, the way he speaks, is somebody who knows what he's talking about. Better, let me just leave. Let me not try to risk this, asking the curse of God upon us. They see the Messenger of Allah, which is gentleness and his nobility and his great countenance Allah has given him and his nur and his majestic way of walking coming from his house with his daughter Fatima to Zahra with Sina Ali and Karam Allah with Sina Hassan wa Hussein this was the people he walked at and coming to the place and he tell them he take bring his blanket and he cover them, he say, this is my family. And what you, are you ready? They say, no, we're leaving. We don't want to do that. You let them go back to Yemen, to Nasrat. This is what have happened for those people who deny it, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that God was one, he had no son, and he was not born. He no have no beginning and no end. And that is what makes him a God. He cannot be described, neither comprehend. Even imagination cannot design him. Allah, that is what makes him a God. 
if God is understood and perceived and known, what we know from Allah is what he said to us, to, to meditate in the sign around us and in ourselves. And to meditate in his ayah, all those things you have fine. We see the rain coming down, the sun, and the moon, the night and the day. We see the trees and the fruit and the vegetable. We sing the animals with such a beautiful way Allah has created them. You see, indeed, you, you are the creator. And indeed, there is a creator. And indeed, there is a creator who is refined in the way he created. And indeed, we submit to you and we bow down to you and we testify there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. الحمد لله الحمد لله على كل حال الحمد لله رب العالمين خلق كل شيء يا عباد الله كفى بالله وكلا وكفى بالله عليما وكفى بالله شهيدا يا عباد الله كل نصر من الله كل فضل من الله كل خضر من الله كل رحمه من الله اللهم صل على سيد الوجود محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سابق اللوامه انواره من السماوات صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه عدد رمادي وعدد النجوم السماء وعدد ملائكه المقربون من بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل والله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد all praise and thank be to allah and indeed my people is enough out of weakness allah is enough allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a knower is enough as a giver and my people every help come from Allah every victory have been bestowed on us by Allah every knowledge we have from God every assistance come from God if there is no doubts in you because of that you will make it this word in your heart that no one nowhere anyhow can help you except Allah subhanahu and if you know that everything come from him you will make it this word and you will make it your marqiyah this is no doubt about that and all what we ask for you is that you need to do the best you can and the best you can in the best of your ability allah is loving caring and allah is full of rahmah man will never be perfect but at least try the best you can he will let enter paradise even those who slow in this journey to to going to him all if you want to see you facing his direction you wanting you want him you enter paradise if you crawling slow to him you enter paradise if you walking to him you will enter paradise if you running to him you will enter paradise if you flying to him you enter but let it see you do making that effort that you indeed want to go to him even you are if i are a weak human being allah is full of love but we do not want those who are turning them back to allah subhanahu just to facing him is enough for you to enter paradise is full of love and grace allah subhanahu but try 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 the in the best you can it's allah rabbi so and of course to close this sermon my dear people i will ask you to pray alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaibi wa yuqimuna as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun in the end of the fifth verse ulaika humul muflikun ulaika humul muflikun in the end of that verse those are the people who will be victorious and successful is those people who believe in the unseen 
who guards establish prayer who share a portion of what i have provide for them alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib wa yuqimuna as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun make sure you understand that. why allah azza wa jalla says this anybody who do not believe in the sin just say uh, seeing is believing you you have read that many time seeing is believing seeing is believing is kufr if you hold to seeing and believing is kufr are you follow because already the quran take that away alladhina yu'minuna bil ghaib allah azza wa jalla says It I want you to believe in what you don't see but you say oh anything I know is not true be careful about that you fall to kufr because you you already don't don't believe in what Allah has says there's so many things we have to believe yet we have never seen you have most of the people have not seen the angels neither even one thing they have not seen that most of the people have never dream yet in paradise or hell But you have to believe in this. But that faith is what going to increase. And taqwa and that is what going to increase the love of God because you believe in the thing yet you know see them. If you waiting for anything you know see you know believe I also be there. You going to fall in kufr. There is many thing more thing we have not seen that the thing we have seen. in the cosmos in the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what we have not seen <laughs> Allahu akbar is greater than we, what we have seen remember this don't forget that wallahi alazim thousand millions of species and things Allah has created even the naked eye cannot see and they play a great role in the universe but Allah has not allowed us to look to see that so you need to to think about that so first to believe in the sin and to establish salat what mean that establish salat establish salat is three things number one, to pray and not to pray for fajr and leave till at night to pray back when you establish salat you have you have to pray and of course men no going to be able to do that every day there will be some time a small situation can come to the way allah know that inshallah rabbi but you have to pray when you get the time you get you pay those prayer ala kulli hal even it happened to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam go to bed in an expedition they read to sleep and he ask anyone is responsible here to to wake we up for salatul fajr sidna bilal radhiyallahu anhu say ya rasulullah me i will wake everybody for fajr and the people sleep until the sun come out even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam You see when you see uh, open his eye and see the sun he say ya allah but sina bilal wake up but he so shame he been promised to wake up the people so he he, he wake but he cannot get up sallallahu alaihi wasallam say ya bilal he say la baik ya rasulullah muni you been supposed to wake me up look the sun he was so shy he said no problem just call us and he say he tell the company don't worry allah is the one who have cause us to sleep you see sometimes sleep even until the day pass it can be the rahma of god he say this my servant is so tired he work so much i need to give him one more or two more hours and you don't know that is not of course i don't want to take that as a alibi to every day sleep at 10 say god give me that <laughs> day of rest but yes indeed that can happen and is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gonna do that of that for you so tubarak allah establish salat you make the salat and it mean a lot more than that establish salat it mean that you love salat people some people pray but they no love salat you lose some of that you have to love salat when you love salat then it begin to be transforming you You remember the Prophet sallallahu alaihi says in one hadith that any time you pray 
it take away a little bit of bad habit from you. And that is the Quran even said before the Hadith. But anytime you get, get or you make one good salat, if you get 200 bad things on you, at least you take 3, 4, 10, 20 out. One good salat, take something out of you. And that is the way we progress to become purified and become perfect in San Kamil in the long run, inshallah. But loving the Salat is the key of the benefit of Salat. You know Salat only for pray and go because I am say I am a Muslim, I need to make Salam, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. But that love, that love of Salat is what the secret of Salat is in. That you saw where, uh, taking a good ablution with your time in a nice way, where to, won't, won't wear a nice clothes because you're home, you're not rushing, and uh, stand up and call the Azan or, and the Iqama and Takbir and recite the Quran in a slow tone because you love this meeting with Allah. That is the way you're going to gain something from Salat. The secret of Salat, uh, the Sir of Salat, is that love. It's the, 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 the love who, who you, you take him from standing in front of law. Because if you know that this is the meeting of Allah Azawajal, you need to be prepared for it. That you, that you must intimate, intimate time in your life is the uh, uh, time when you establish Salah. That is the most uh, intimate and sweet time we have inside our life. So make sure that we no neglect them and we use it in the proper way to gain what you wanted. And when you touch him, don't rush, ask Allah what you want. In at that moment he was in a meeting with God. You cannot rush. You cannot be in the car in worry, driving and making dua. And while you was praying just now, make dua and make dua back in the car, but make dua after you touch him. This is the moment where everything around you is angel, everything is light, everything is communication with God, everything, all the heaven are open for you. To, they, 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 they say, we're listening to you, just ask. Call and we'll answer you. This is at that time to all praise be to Allah. And ala kulli hal, the people, Allah has blessed them in so many ways. And everything Allah has blessed you with, you need to share it with the other people. Sharing is necessary and very important in the life of the human being if you want to be successful and improve. <coughs> Do not sit down in what you have and just want to have more and more. Sharing is what they give you more. This is very important, Allah could have. That's the secret, and Allah did teach you that in the Quran. And of course, there is only two things left for to be successful. Allah says in Surah to Bayna in the Quran, I'm closing this sermon, that the right religion is to pray and to give zakat. is still can be translated by the zakat. And khayyima come from the word qiyam. When we're praying, we're standing straight. He said the right religion, the straight religion Allah says in Surah Subayna, is those who pray and give zakat. Zakat, utu zakat is is the same thing. You see that? Uh, establish a, 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 a salat and share what Allah has given to you. And again, to Bayna, establish Salat and give Zakat. And Allah says, giving Zakat and, and, and praying and giving Zakat is the right religion. Now, let me unfold that for you and we close this khutbah. Uh, in this too, in, in, in praying and giving Zakat, you have completed religion. Why? The uh, uh, man have two connection. You and yourself, you and God, you and the fellow human being. These three tie is necessary in our life. You and yourself. You and God. And you and the human being. In this zakat and salat, you get, you tie all those three nets. What is you and yourself? Is that surrender to Allah? We're going to take you to salvation. What is you and God? You have obey Him. 
you surrender, you worship him, and you obey his law. In zakat, in salat, you taking care of yourself for salvation, you worshiping God, and that is a kind of obedience. You worshiping it, you accept that he was a servant. Because say I am a servant of God is not enough. You have to prove that. You get? Then salihat. Salihat for many of the people is salat in the tafsir. That's what is this? It says after you believe, you need to follow that you believe with good actions, good deed. Baqiyat saliyat is good deed, salat is good deed, fasting is good deed. You need to do this, all this, this. Are you followed? And of course, in the last, that is a connection between you and yourself, you and God. And the connection between, the connection for, between you and the other people is they giving you and you giving them. It's a word of exchange of love. What we marry now, we unfikun, is no mean only money. It mean a hug. It mean love. <coughs> it mean to help somebody who, who lost to find a direction to continue his journey. Razak na um, razak. You know, it mean every type of provision you're getting from God. Most of the people think razak. Uh, uh, Rizq uh, is only money, he is love, he is a hug, he is showing the way uh, of uh, somebody who lost, he is feeding a poor person, all that is what Allah has given to you and you share it with the other people. And you see, if every man understands that, when we are going to share and to share what Allah has given to you, immediately it becomes very easy. We live in harmony and in this beautiful way. We will know enmity, but each one is giving to them. I get from you what I know have. You get from me uh, what you do not have. And the world will be so beautiful and peaceful and loving. And make Allah take me to that. وَأَخْرُضَعَنَا الحمد لله رب العالمين يا عباد الله تقوا الله إن الصلاة والنسك والمحياة والممات لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ حديثنا وقبلنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين اللهم أنت رشق لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لو الملك ولو الحمد يعي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم إني اللهم يسألك رزقا كثيرا وفضلا عظيما ومقامي كريما عمينا في الدنيا والآخرة أستغفر الله عظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو وعطب إليه يا الله يا الله يا مجيب أجب لنا دعونا وصلاتنا في كل مكان وسعة بجايس للوجود محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ليوم الدين يا بد الله تقوى أقيم الصلاة نقصد الوسمج والجمال